Welcome. Game week is finally here. I uh, just want to begin by uh, um, saying that uh, Brandon Dawkins has decided to leave the program, and uh, we uh, um, wish him nothing but the very best. He's a fine young man, and uh, um, very excited about uh, the uh, the two guys that I consider our top two quarterbacks, um, and uh, Peyton Ramsey and Michael Penix, and and the work that they've done since they've been here and, and throughout fall camp and have done a tremendous job competing against each other and and uh, really doing a great job of putting themselves in position to, to win the confidence of their teammates and our coaching staff. So I uh, love what where they're at. They just got to go out and get it done on game day. And then uh, going to be moving Reese Taylor to quarterback. And uh, really, uh, I think you know how I feel about that young man and how special he is. And so uh, he's been working on offense throughout camp. And so, um, but uh, going to put him in that quarterback's room and allow him to be able to um, get grounded there and uh, utilize him to, to the fullest. So I'm uh, very excited about that room and what that room has and, and how they're going to be able to work well together and, and uh, move it moving in, in the right direction. And then also uh, excited about, uh, about kickoff. I feel like our guys have really bought in uh, this offseason and really excited to be able to see them compete. And, we went out and recruited uh, to try and address our depth. And uh, a lot of those guys are going to have an opportunity this weekend to, to compete for the first time as Hoosiers and, and uh, multiple positions on both sides of the football. And uh, that's what excites me the most is to be able to see those, those new guys uh, um, be out there and be in, uh, representing our great university down in Miami. So uh, excited about the uh, start of the season and really looking forward to, to game day. It'll be here very, very soon. Questions? Uh, when you told Brandon the news that he wasn't going to be a starting quarterback, did he give you any indication that he was going to want to leave the program? Not at that point, no. What, what was his reasoning? What did he tell you? You know, just uh, um, going a different direction with his life. So kind of wanted to sort some things out and get out and figure out what's next for him. That was kind of the the long conversation that we had. So, uh, but those conversations are personal and private. And, and uh, like I said, I wish you nothing but the best. He's, he's, a, he's a good kid. Can you just take us through a timeline, though, of, of when he came to you or, or how it all played out? Yeah, you know, I, uh, as we always do, you, you go through and you have a, um, an intense competition. So you always talk to the young men the day before you announce it, which is what we did. And so uh, I think, you know, from that point on, obviously he was, you know, you know, making some decisions and thoughts for himself. And so uh, a couple of days after that, we, he and I met, and, and then yesterday he let us know, you know where he's at. So uh, uh, that's the situation. So pretty efficient timeline, and, and, uh, um, but it's game week, and we're ready to roll. Can you just take us through, you talked about, you know, when you were going to name a starter, you were going to definitely give them a little bit of time before the mock game. Mm -hmm. So kind of like how many days of as the one, just the true starter, is, is Ramsey going to have, you know, before you guys head down to FIU? Yeah, you know, he uh, um, has had several days. And the thing about it, which is really what I feel good about <clears throat> with whoever we decided to go with, was the ability to give them a lot of reps with the ones. We So we rotated those guys exclusively. Um, but uh, I uh, – um, once I made the decision and, and we met with all three young men and told them um, who was going to be, you know, starting, then Peyton Ramsey's taken all this, the one rep since. And so it gave him a chance to get a couple practices under his belt, get a chance to go through the mock game, a chance to go through um, everything that we do this weekend, which is all game planning for, for FIU. So he's had quite a few reps, uh, but he, he, as well as the other two guys throughout the competition, were with the ones quite a bit and had chances to both, you know, take him during practice reps, you know, during scrimmage reps, uh, during, uh, you know, end of the practice finish drills where we're going through situations and, and working on that. So, so feel like that he's had a lot of quality reps with the ones. Coach, what do you, what has impressed you and what do you really like about the offensive side of the ball this camp? Yeah, the thing that kind of sticks out to me is uh, um, the multiple guys that we've been getting the ball to. You know, I think that's a key thing that you want to be able to do is distribute the ball 
to your guys that can make plays in space and and our receivers have uh, done a, a really good job. I, you know, I say that comparing back to last year's fall camp and kind of comparing the two. And I actually went back and watched film of the scrimmages from, from last year and different practice sessions and just trying to compare where we are and, and what the players look like physically and how they're moving and stuff. And so just encouraged by the, the offensive production by our receivers, you know, and a lot of different guys catching balls. And, and uh, that's been encouraging. And then a number of running backs that have been has shown up as being guys that are making plays, you know, offensive line, getting push in the run game and, and uh, being able to um, have just a consistent group of guys work together there that we didn't have in the past, you know. And so those things, I think, have helped help those guys feel more confident going into week one and, and feeling good about their execution. You know, obviously, it's like any, anything else, you know, you have it's still a new group that has to mesh together uh, completely. But uh, I just think that they're, they're, they seem to work well as a unit, and now they got to go out and execute on game day. That's, uh, that's obviously what matters most, and that's what everything you do is built around. So, But that, that kind of sticks out to me. Uh, what has to happen for Morgan Ellison to be reinstated? That's totally out of my hands, so I have no, no comment on that. Is it likely he's reinstated? I really don't know. I mean, it's just out of my hands. Coach, a uh, couple years ago was your first uh, game here as a D coordinator mm -hmm. down at FIU. Different coaching staff, how similar or different are they offensively from what they were a couple years ago? And, and kind of what areas do you, could they stretch your guys' defense? Yeah, interestingly, they have a lot of the same players. You know, they were young back then, and, uh, you know, we had to come from behind to beat them in the fourth quarter. We were losing going into the fourth quarter that season. And so a uh, new quarterback, that is a difference. Um, running backs are some of the same guys that played then are now older. Uh, they're all, almost the entire offensive line is, is, uh, has played a bunch of ball. We played against a lot of those guys a couple years ago. So receivers, kind of the same thing. You know, there's obviously some new guys here and there. But uh, um, new system, but it's interestingly similar, you know, in a lot of ways with what they do. Um, they're more multiple. They do a lot of different personnel groupings and uh, more than we're used to seeing you know, in today's game. You don't see a lot of that you know, like we used to in the past, but uh, they do a lot of those kind of things. I, I think the strength of teams are, is their running backs and their running game and their offensive line is very, very mature and, and, and experienced. And, and uh, so they're going to have a new quarterback. You know, they haven't named one yet, but uh, whoever steps behind center, they will be different than the guy that started from the last three seasons. So um, that makes them different for sure. But uh, um, they, uh, they've done a good job. Coaches, uh, Coach Davis, obviously, um, won everywhere he's been, recruits really, really well. And, and uh, they got some new faces that we haven't seen yet play, and they'll be good players. And, and uh, you know, we've, the last two times we've played them, you know, we've, we've trailed going in the fourth quarter. You know, that was here before I got here, and then the year I was here. So uh, um, it'll be a dogfight. Coach, uh, talk a little bit about um, Luke Timian and Watt Billier at the same position. Does that mean that they, generally speaking, will not be on the field at the same time, or is that just a part of how your two deep? Looks? I think it's kind of part of how the two deep looks. They're on; they'll be on the field quite a bit, you know. And and it's just kind of when you list, you know, you kind of list things a certain way, you know, in terms of just one personnel look, and then you'll be able to find ways to. You know, those are two of our better players, you know, and uh, getting them out there together, and, and obviously keeping them fresh too. You know, they do a lot of running and. And uh, with with what the way we operate offensively, so um, but yeah, those are two of our better playmakers on offense. Just looking at the two deep, is Justice the guy a kicker? Is he going to be the? He's going to be the uh, field goal kicker going into week one. That's correct. That was a tight competition too. You know, it really kind of came down and, and went with the uh, the older, more mature guy. You know, and uh, um, just the way we charted everything, I feel like that he's earned the right to be the the starting field goal kicker uh, going into week one. But uh, Charles Campbell's right there on his heels, and so uh, we'll get a chance to see what he can do too. Is that a situation because you have you know a right-footed kicker, a left-footed kicker, where you can maybe use them on different hashes? That is very possible. Tom, one more question. Last year at the end of the season, you talked about depth being a big mm -hmm. issue for you. Do you feel like that area has been addressed in a positive way since? I, I believe we're moving in the right direction. I do. Um, in the area of recruiting, you know, we're not where we want to be where we need to be depth wise, but uh, I feel better about it. Yes, than I did a year ago. Um, we've got, uh, um, you know, the plan is to be able to play a lot of guys, you know, um, not just because it's an early game. Um, I believe that gives us a, an advantage in terms of 
late game finishes, you know, in terms of stamina and execution at critical times. And so um, that uh, to me is in with our weight room and the changes we made there. And, and so uh, I, do, I do believe, yes, it's, uh, it's better than it's been since I've been here. Uh, not where I want it to be, not where it's going to be, but uh, definitely moving in the right direction. Um, Coach, I know obviously injuries and things you can't predict kind of determine this, but with Reese going to quarterback, it looked like he was probably going to be a guy that played a decent amount this year. Do you still see that? Can he maybe slide into that maybe package you guys are thinking about using with Brandon Dawkins? You know, I, I see him definitely playing, yes. And so uh, obviously, you know, we go through and, and reevaluate some things as far as how that's going to look. Um, but uh, you know, he's a guy that I view as a playmaker, you know, and uh, you want to get him touching the football. And, and so in, in some ways, this kind of gives you a chance to kind of even be even more creative with that, to be honest with you. But uh, at the same time, you know, I still want him to be utilized, you know, package wise um, on offense. And, and now it's obviously expanded, you know, so but uh, um, our staff have had a lot of conversations about that young man since he's been here. He's, re he's really special, not just as a player, but as a person. You know, when I talk to him, he's just coach, whatever I got to do to help this football team. And uh, that's kind of kid he is. And, and uh, um, his one word is adapt. He, he, he made sure I remembered that as we were meeting and meeting with the coaches. And, and uh, that's just pretty cool to me because he's an unselfish guy that uh, loves IU. So those are the kind of guys we want to put on the field. You mentioned Thursday when you were talking about the quarterbacks that, that Michael Penix probably, I think you said, will play early. Is it? Possible, likely he plays in the opener, or kind of how, how have you thought about you know? You know, I don't. Uh, I try not to pigeonhole that and back ourselves in a corner, but uh, um, it wouldn't surprise me if you see him on Saturday. I don't know when, where, how, you know, but uh, I just think that he's a young man that uh, um, you know we want to be able to grow him, his development into the program, and see see uh, how he handles all that and responds. You know, so uh, we'll find out. For sure on Saturday how it plays out, but yeah, I, I do believe that uh, I'd like to be able to get him involved. What did uh, what did Hendershot do to beat out Doris at tight end? You know, I think uh, you know for Peyton, um, he really was challenged. I believe this off season to uh, play to his level. You know, as I tell these guys, I said I, I want I want to see the guy here that we recruited. You know. And uh, his athleticism, his ability to make plays in space and, and running and jumping and, and strength. He's a big old strong guy physically, uh, blocking. You know, you got to be a complete player to play tight end. You know, and Austin has really improved, and I'm so proud of him. He's, he, he may be one of our most improved guys on the offense. So they're both going to play, you know, and, and, and some others is that position as well. So, but to go through and you, you got to kind of list a depth chart, you know, sometimes we probably make more of that than we need to, but, but they're all going to play. And then from there you evaluate, you know, and say, Hey, you know, right now, this is kind of how we looked at you from the off season and spring and fall camp. And then now I'll say, okay, let's say uh, now you get a chance to do it when it counts and we'll see how you do. So it obviously next week, week two, it could be a little different than that, but, but they're all those, those times are all going to play. New guys taking on new roles on that defensive line. Just how do you feel they're ready to perform, and how excited are you for, for just seeing them in game action? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, Jacob Robinson has really elevated his leadership. You know, um, obviously he's been here for a long time, and I love the way he owns, owns the defense on the field and how hard we practice and how we run to the football and, and getting the guys together and getting their mindset right. So, um, you know, he's a key, you know, and Gavin Everett's so solid and in there and been a huge – uh, addition to be able to be a guy you can count on and have a now back and his ability to produce. I tell you, Alan Stallings is another one that's really grown and developed, you know, this offseason and, and his physical strength and stamina. And, and uh, so love that group. And there's on and on. And, and uh, Jerome Johnson has continued to develop. And he's got to be a playmaker for us and have Michael Barwick back. And Kate Samuels added to the group. And, you know, Jamiris Bowen's another guy I've been extremely encouraged with his his growth. So. Um, I'm anxious to see those guys play, you know, and uh, we're going to count on them and we're going to rotate them and we're going to play a bunch of them. And I didn't even mention some of the guys. There's some freshmen that are going to play. And, and so uh, just really uh, it's going to be by committee. It's kind of how we've done it at that position the last two years I've been here. That doesn't, that's not going to be any different. And so, uh, but you, you, you start 
on both sides of the ball, you know, big men lead the way, and, and those guys got to set the tone for our defense by how hard they play and how physical they play and how technically sound that they play. And that's really uh, you know, a big part of what we do in our scheme. And, and it all relies on, on their uh, initial movement and, and how well they play with their hands and, and run to the ball. So I think it's a, a good group of guys that's really bought in, and Coach Hagan does a tremendous job of holding them accountable. Coach Hayden Whitehead um, had a good year last year. What kind of progress has he made? What's he look like? Yeah, I think that uh, um, the weight room has been good for him. You know, he uh, um, had not been a guy that had really maximized that area of his development, you know, in the past as much as he, he needed to. And so he's gotten stronger and, and uh, better condition. And, and so I think it's just helped his leg strength, you know, with, with that. But it's also more about just control, more for him at that position and ability to, you know, I think a big thing we focused on is, you know, being able to, to pocket punt him you know, and be able to, to do that as, as a part of our arsenal and to feel good about it. You know, obviously he has the ability to, to, to kick on the move, which is what he does best. But uh, I just think to have the, the versatility to be able to change those launch points, you know, where we're going to kick from and, and improve in his accuracy at those different uh, types of kicks. And because it's all about ball placement for me and how we how we call things and how we set the protections, you know. So um, I think he's just grown. And, and once again, he's got to go out and compete, and, but he's got a year under his belt now. And you know, this time last year was his first football game ever in his life. So he, he was nervous and so was I. So I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but, uh, but obviously he did a great job. So uh, now he's pr pretty comfortable and kind of knows, even just, even just kind of knowing how to warm up before a game was something he had to kind of figure out because I thought he was kicking a gazillion balls before and I just kind of had to pull him back and talk to him about that and get him, get that number under control. And, and uh, so, anyways, I just think you get year two for him as well as, as uh, be able to just keep being a dependable guy that, that uh, does a great job of flipping the field. Um, Coach, a rule that I think has kind of flown under the radar is the, and I've read some coaches talking about the headset rule. Hmm. Before, you guys could have as many as you wanted, and I think they originally made it 20, and now it's 23. They, they amended it. For you, how does that change? I mean, what kind of plan have you guys got in place to – you know, so it's, there's no kind of snags on game day. You know, it, it's created some changes. Um, you know, we've had to have several meetings about it, and, and you have to go through and you have to designate who's going to be on the headsets. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're just one of those staffs where whatever the rules are, we're going to follow the rules, you know. And, and uh, so we've had to make some changes. Um, not massive changes. You know, we don't have the numbers of staffing that some places do, which is the, really the intent for the rule is to, to, to create some, some, uh, um, some competitive balance uh, with some people's budgets and the way they're able to staff their their uh, coaches. And so uh, um, you, you have to be it's very strict about who's in the press box and who can be on a headset. And so, you know, some programs are going to have a lot of guys that used to be that are not anymore. That's not the case for us because we didn't have all those extra guys on our staff. So it's just really more of a, a guy or two that we've had to kind of tweak. But it does affect, you know, even you have to go back and look at how old certain guys are, you know, as part of the rules you know, to who can be on and who can be off a headset. And so uh, um, that's trying to, the, the way it's written. So we had to go through and sometimes those rules have to figure out the fine print, what it really means and get it interpreted and ask questions and come back with all that. So, uh, um, but we feel good about it. We've got a good plan and, and uh, feel like we're going to be able to maximize the information you're trying to gain on game day. That's the key. Uh, just, as just a special teams question. Uh, I see you have Jared Smoller listed as the kickoff guy. I presume on the road you can only take two kickers would be my guess on that. And then also it's just really nice to see J Jason Harris's name mm -hmm. listed as the lead putt returner. Talk about that a little sure. bit. Well, first of all, with, with Jared Schmoller, it's, you know, he's going to be our kickoff specialist. And that's kind of really when we brought him here, that's what I kind of envisioned him being. And, and he's done that. That's what the role he's settled into. And, and so it does have the ability to possibly be a long field goal guy, too, um, in, in situations of such. But, uh, um, you know, I think that, you know, right now the rule is you can take 70 for a conference road game and then you don't have the limitation for a non-conference road game. So it gives us a little flexibility this first road, road game we have to be able to take a couple extra guys that you wouldn't be able to take to a conference game. And so we'll do that, and that usually affects special teams. And then, but also, one thing that really helps us is, uh, you know, Drew Conrad is a guy that's extremely talented. You know, yes, he's our holder, but he's your backup punter. Uh, he can kick off, he can technically, kick field goals, he had to. So he really gives you tremendous value 
Um, and, and he's probably, at, for that very reason, maybe our most valuable special teams guy on the team because he can do so many things. He does so many things really, really well. And he takes a ton of pride in running that, that side of the ball. So uh, that gives us, when it comes down to taking you know, the 70 guys, he gives us a lot of, of backups that you have, and, and so uh, um, which is really a key thing. And then when you talk about Jay Sean, I mean, I just every time I see him out there, I feel the same way. You know, I, mean, I really didn't think he'd be able to go this year when it, when it first happened, and we started talking to our medical staff. And, you know, even matter of fact, I just kind of prepared myself for my first conversation with him and was that, you know, hey, just kind of, kind of loving him up a little bit and just saying, hey, man, it's just, but he, from the very beginning, he never flinched. He's like, coach, I'm coming back. And I was like, you serious? And he said, yes, he said, I'm, I'm, and this is before he had surgeries for anything. And he just had his mind made up and, and uh, he's like, I'm going to finish this. And so uh, he's been that way. And, and because of that, he's ahead of schedule. And, and uh, I didn't even think once he got injured, he'd even be back for this game, you know? And so, but he's uh, we've got him on pitch count, you know, in his preparation, but, but it just shows you the, the power of your mind and your heart and your attitude and how it affects the way you heal sometimes and the way you work at your at that healing process and rehab and everything. So a uh, special young man. So he's going to be, he's going to help our team. He's going to be very successful in whatever he does. On Marcelino Ball, just what have you seen that maybe two or three things he really has improved on from last year? And how important is his production for your defense to do what you wanted to do? Yeah. First of all, very important. You know, when we lost him last year, I was really, really concerned. And uh, fortunately, we had some guys step up and, and fill that void. But uh, the things that stick out to me, first of all, leadership. You know, he has um, completely embraced, and I have to give you know, Coach Womack credit because he's working with him. We moved him into that room you know, just to get him more in tune with those fits. You know, really, he's still a defensive back by, by our system, but uh, just be able to, to grow him in that area of, of coverage with the, with the linebackers. And he has totally embraced the, the leadership role and taking Cam Jones under his wing and spent extra time with them and, and been in the meeting rooms with them at, late at night during fall camp and, and just helping him, and which I think is really not something that he – it was always just about, hey, as long as we got him squared away, he'd take care of himself and, and he's ready to play, and that was, that was it. And so to see him embrace that leadership role has been huge. And it's also, I think it's helped him be a better player because he's more locked in. You know, because obviously if you're showing somebody else what to do, you're making sure they're doing it right, then you got to be on top of your game. And then number two, I really feel like we've really worked hard with him finishing. And, uh, um, and, and Coach Nelson's worked with him a lot because he works with our Huskies and has one of our GAs. And, and Jim's done a great job of helping him finish on his pressures, you know. And uh, that's where he, he's obviously gifted athletically. But to be able to get to the passer with, with using technique to defeat offensive linemen and defeating blockers, I think that's really where I've seen him grow a lot. And uh, that's a big part of his production is going to be. And so we, we need that guy to you know, be doing some things for us and how we play him. And then there's times where he's going to have to set the edge or be in coverage, and, and he won't be you know, always, always pressure him. But uh, when we do, he's got to be able to finish those pressures. So those are the two things to me that jump out. And, and I, I do believe he's, he's, playing, he's been playing his best football these last few weeks here in fall camp and, and for a lot of different reasons. And so encouraged by his growth. He just needs to continue. Real quickly back to Jay Shun. Just for a guy who's seen limited time on the field, has, have you ever been around a player who has been able to make more of an impact and set more of an example despite the fact that they've had limited time on the field? Yeah, prob probably not. not. Not a guy that's, that has been away this much. It just speaks to his character, the way he's respected. He's one of those guys where our, our team will tell you when he speaks, the guys listen. You know, and uh, whether it's, you know, after practice and little things that guys need to do or not do. And, and uh, um, he's earned their respect for sure by the way he's handled the adversity he's been through. And I think that, you know, we all know life, you know, when, when life um, throws you curves or throws you uh, heartaches and tough things, that's when you grow. You know, we don't like it, but that's we know those times cause us to expand and, and grow and strengthens us. And, and that's what it's done to him. And I think it's caused him to be – you know, viewed a different way too because of what he's been through, and he's consi been consistent in his attitude and his approach to life, and and hasn't chosen to feel sorry for himself and and complain and, and do all this and, and and whatever else he could be tempted to do when things don't go your way. And so, um, I, I just think that he's, uh, you know, he's one of our leaders. You know, and he was voted on our leadership team, and and I think that's just kind of you know an example of of how the, the guys view him, and we're just really proud of him. And uh, I just think that he's uh, he was raised right. And he's taken that, you know, those that have invested in him along the way have, should be very proud of him. Right, maybe last one. Julian, 
we have a connection to higher powers to get the kind of weather you needed uh, this week. The heat and humidity's you know, back. I agree. You know, it was uh, it was warm even during the the mock game. It started getting warmer, and it feels uh, you know it's, it's got the Florida feel to it out there right now. So it's very important, you know, because you can't simulate that. You can talk about it, and you can do all these different things, but you gotta physically feel and I've lived down there for many many years so and we got a big chunk of our players that are from the south so they're uh, um, you know they'll, they'll be ready for that part but yeah we, we we need as much heat as we can get and it's it's definitely here thank you have a great day Elio